The chef goes for taste. That's the chef right there in the little boat, using the fishing pole to go for the wild taste of Alaskan salmon. You get your little fishing hole, you get just the right spot, your boat, your gear are all set, the weather's perfect, the fish are biting, and look who shows up. Another angler just has to bust right in on you and show the offspring how it's done. Yep, wild Alaska salmon. That's up next on Chefs of Field. Never fished with bears next to me before. Our fisherman's name is Matt Little Dog, and he is the chef at one of the most notable restaurants in Anchorage, Alaska, Simon and Seifert's. This is a king salmon. It's our largest Pacific salmon. Chef Matt Little Dog of the Blackfoot Nation learned to appreciate fish and fishing as a boy growing up in the mountains of Montana. Many of those years, he dreamt of this, Alaska's untouched wilderness, its clear, pristine waters, dreamt of a dream on and by those waters, among the vast mountains, close by the majestic glaciers, seeking the fish, cooking the fish, always reaching for the best of both. During Alaska's summers of midnight sun, he's often cooking all day and fishing all night. Any salmon that Matt pulls out of Alaskan waters is wild. There are no farmed factory fish here. They are not allowed in this state. An hour out of Anchorage by Alaska Taxi, and they're setting down in Wolverine Creek, where the salmon are coming in from the Pacific, and where populations that feed on salmon are waiting too. So the fish here, are, these are all sockeyes right now? Right. All and the sockeyes. second run are in here with the first run? Right. Some started to go upstream already, mm -hmm. and some others are still piling up down below waiting to make their move. Whatever decides to trigger them and mm -hmm. take them upstream, nobody really knows. They'll go up to Wolverine Lake is where these guys are going. That's where they're going. Yeah. Any other salmon come in besides yeah. the reds? Yeah. Well, silvers, the silvers. Come in there. They'll be coming in before too long. Kings don't come in, though? No. Kings wow. don't come up into here. So they go up that river right there. They okay. go up that tiny little creek. Jeez. Pretty incredible area, isn't it? It is, it's amazing. Never fished in a spot like this. Well, whoever gets here, gets here. Nobody owns fishing rights. If you weigh six or 800 pounds, nobody tells you you can't fish here. You're hungry and you have babies who not only have to be fed, they must be shown how to do it. That's a little too close for me. It could crush me very easily. That's pretty cool. Never fished with bears next to me before. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. wow. Thanks. Scaring the fish. Oh, he's a beauty. It's nice and chrome. He's a fighter. There we go. It's a nice sockeye. It's a beautiful sockeye. Beautiful, eye. nice and chrome. It's just come in from the salt bit. water. Got the black bear in the background up there, eyeballing it. This is the first time I've seen the black bear swim around. Usually they don't swim around. <laughs> that bear is like eight feet away from now. Got one. Amazing. The bear must eat. She must stuff in 65,000 calories a day. Yes, that is 65,000 calories each day. Winter is coming, you see, and she needs the fat for the long sleep. Can't get over how close these bears are. I have a fish on and they don't even care, it seems like. I think that one came within 10 feet that one time. Yeah. I haven't been that close to a bear ever. 
I don't think even in the zoo. Well, we should probably get heading back. Okay. That was amazing. I appreciate you showing me, Brent. You that was bet. awesome. I'm glad you came up. I'll have it's to come back time. up for sure. That was incredible. That, uh, that was probably one of the best moments of my life, really. Uh, I've never been that close to a bear, and uh, being able to do what I love and fish, it, uh, it was incredible. I really enjoyed that. How many state biologists does it take to count the salmon in a waterway? So what are you guys doing here? We're sampling king salmon for sex, size, and age composition. Answer, as many as you can get along the net. They move slowly, catching and counting one at a time. Chef Little Dog has now become scientist helper, joining the crew with Alaska fish and game biologist Robert Bezich, lead scientist here on the Anchor River near the city of Homer, on a project to count and protect the salmon. And we just want to pull it over the rocks, and as we move down there, Matt, you can just move off to the right. Okay. We're doing good. Yeah, fish on. A, got another There's one. one. Wish I wish I could catch fish like this on my pole this fast and easy. Yeah, and netting's a lot different. Yeah, it is. It's definitely. amazing though you find in a hole like this on the river. Yeah. These fish hold them before they move up the spawn. Oh uh yeah. -huh. Yeah, go okay. ahead, Matt, and grab a king. Just grab a fish. You bet. Right there. there you go. There you go. Gotcha. And you don't want to clamp him Yeah, down. no, I just hold him there. Can, ease down and keep him in the water a little bit. Alaska is determined to protect its fish. If state officials succeed in keeping the population stable, limiting the take by commercial and recreational fisher folk, then this enormous asset will be here long after all the oil deposits have been pumped dry. The fish are counted by age and gender, and the state allots the fishing days based on these counts. So Robert, this is a, a king here? This is a king salmon. It's our largest Pacific salmon. Um, and the dis most distinguishing characteristic of, is the size of the fish. Um, this fish is probably a little over 18 pounds, I would say, just judging by her size. And as the fish gets this mature, it's turned from silver when it first entered the river, from its mm -hmm. ocean, ocean phase to life history. And as it matures in the stream, it turns to red. It gets dark mm -hmm. um, before spawning. How long uh, would you say this has been in the freshwater? Uh, probably river? a good month. It's a three ocean fish. It spent a year here in freshwater after oh. it emerged from the gravel um, and spent three, three years in the salt water. Mm -hmm. How, do, you, and growing how do they know which river that they came down? Ocean currents carry them home. And once they get close, they, they home to their natal streams through mm -hmm. its odors a big Big yeah, part of it. That's what I've heard. Each stream has its own characteristic. What's ever in the water, the minerals, the salts, mm -hmm. everything it sends a signal to the fish that they can recognize from imprinting mm -hmm. in the stream as a juvenile, a small fish, mm -hmm. and it returns to that same stream. Once the salmon leave the salt water, they stop eating. Their one drive is to move upriver to reproduce. Many feel that it's the wilderness, the energy, that makes the taste of natural salmon unique. And what do we got there? 75 now. This project is part of trying to rebuild the stock to form the levels of abundance and to really find out what's here. And that is for the people that use the resource, the anglers, and it impacts every household, every gas station, every restaurant here mm -hmm. in the Lower Kenai Peninsula because we get a lot of people coming down here to fish. Oh yeah. I love to fish down here. Yeah, it's great. Well, should we let this one go? Let's let her go. Oh, there she goes. Good shape. Go spawn. Let's talk about buns of steel. This is it. The king salmon. The chum. The coho. Pink. Sockeye. Five species. All share a Latin name that means big old hook nose. Oncorincus is the word. They flourish in Alaska's wild waters. Many are extinct in parts of Canada and in the lower 48 of the U.S., Washington State, Oregon, California. They are long gone from the Atlantic Ocean. Where there were millions, there are now few or none. But here, in America's 49th state, the wild salmon are back every year, fat and full and natural. No farmed fishing is permitted in this state. No artificial salmon here. No factories, no fake feed, no worries about any mad coho disease. 
The fish that are caught today will be delivered to you tomorrow morning. For decades now, Greg Favretto, as a supplier, has been putting fish on the plates of the most discriminating gourmets at Alaska's finer eateries. Greg, the fish purveyor, is now taking Matt, the chef, across the water to Kachemak Bay and Soldovia Point. What you see here today, Matt, the water quality, the rocks, the mussels you see growing, the barnacles, the kelp that's growing, the trees, everything here is basically the same as it was 10,000 years ago. This is a place I like very, very much. This is a place where your fish come from, and I hope you like seeing it. Yeah, Greg, I call you and ask you, you know, hey, where's the sockeye from this week, or where's the king from this week? And you, know, you told me Soldovia Point, now seeing it, it's really a great experience to see that. I wanted you to have a chance to see the scope of the effort that goes into harvesting these fish, uh, icing these fish, moving them quickly. These fishermen have the least impact on the environment, almost none. You see there are no nets being dragged through the water, there's no big boats burning up fuel driving around. They're being caught a few at a time, and this is a very sustainable fishery. Good morning. This is Matt, Little Dog, Chef Matt Little Dog. Hey, how you doing? How nice you? to meet hey, you. Hey, Matt. Just doing some fishing today, huh? Yeah, I'm going to get some. Looks like you got a few nets there. I got a loaded boat. Let's yeah. go unload them. Well, you got room for me? I'll jump sure, on there with you. In. I've never had somebody in my skiff. Here, a new fishing method is being employed. It is called set netting. It's used by only a dozen or so fishermen. It involves a great deal of labor. But the payoff is handsome, fish that are taken cleanly without hauling up turtles and other fish, and whose quality is preserved by the netting and prompt icing. No more than 24 hours from the water to the table at Matt's restaurant in Anchorage. That's a silver. Every few days, the biologists silver. tell Dave how many hours he may leave the net in place. What are you doing there, Dave? I'm sewing my fishing net onto this lead that leads the fish off the beach. Uh -huh. The fish will follow the lead and end up in the fishing net. I'm setting the net this way so it's all bowed in the right direction. Uh -huh. What uh, helped you decide in picking this spot for your main fishing? Everybody's got their personal story, but I enjoyed the fact of fishing out of my home and uh, having my garden at the same time as having your cake and eat it yeah. too, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got an organic garden. Uh -huh. Then I have a family and I, I could be home. And then the kids would come out here as early as six months old and fish with me. Yeah. They'd be in the tote or on my back, two years old. Yeah. I'd have one on my back right now. Uh huh. I guess you can't replace that in life. No. I don't know. You know, it's a special thing. Dave sets his nets just so. Three parallel lines. Then the tide does its work. Chartier takes plenty of fish, but the state makes certain there are far more that get through to spawn. Everyone involved wants this to happen for as many years in the future as it has in the past. Looks good. There's a lot of fish in here. We're ready. So how do we do this? Each one's a little puzzle, you know? And you gotta take them out in a certain way, like I'm taking them over the head now, because he wrapped himself up with this slow current. Not quite as good at this as you. <laughs> you gotta be twisted. That's part of the puzzle. Part of the puzzle. Twist, twist it. Okay, I twist. see. Gotta get his head out. Yeah, you got it. It's as good as in the pan. <laughs> I did it. Get him out of there. We'll make him a fisherman yet. He's gonna make his trade. And we just put him right on ice, just like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got some nice reds here. These add up fast. Mm -hmm. He smiled. I like that. When you get a couple king salmon in, all of a sudden the toad's getting full. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I you know, it's about a 500 toe. pound toad. It don't take long. So what's a good day, Dave? What's a bad day? A uh, bad day is a southeast <laughs> when the fish are running and you got no fish. <laughs> a good day is when you can get 3,000 pounds of reds or something like that. So that's the yeah, king that's I nice want. King, that's the man. guy I want. Don't want to lose him. No, I'll no. I'll let you take that one. Good 20 pounder. Yeah, whatever he is. He's more than that. He's a good one. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the guy we want, but it was, mm -hmm. on, it was actually on the other side. This is the guy. This is the guy right here. It's a girl. It's a white king. It's a white king, king, huh? Yeah, I think oh, so. Yeah. The big flashy tail. Nice sock eye there. Yeah, you got four right in here. That's it. They weren't showing from the mm -hmm. back side, were they? No, bellies were probably down. Yeah. Couldn't see them. And so the day goes. That's a fish. And when it goes to the processing plant, it'll look just like that. Mm -hmm. It's headed out today. It'll be in your restaurant at uh, five just in time to feed your customers. Yeah. <laughs> and we think about this and we smile, you know? Yeah. Because this is what we're doing. So, yeah, we're, we're making a connection between me and this natural environment and um, the customers and everybody along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps the best way to convey to the viewer of this program the fullness of Matt Little Dog's deep attachment to fishing is to report that the chef spent 14 full hours with our film crew out on the water. Then, after the taping was wrapped for the day, instead of going home to rest, Chef Little Dog got back in the boat and went fishing. Matt Little Dog learned fishing from his parents and others in the tribe, spent his early years in the clean, fresh creeks of Montana. He learned cooking, though, from his grandmother from a very early age. His life since then has been devoted to the two pursuits. In the kitchen, hands in the food, out in a boat, line in the water. There's a big difference between farm salmon and fresh, wild Alaskan salmon. And I think the key is, is that it's wild. It's out there, it's surviving on its own, it's not being fed by somebody tending the cages. It has to fend for itself. I have tasted farm-raised salmon, and it's not very flavorful. We serve wild Alaskan salmon year-round. That's the only way to go. Well, we're going to make a stuffed steak of sockeye salmon with a savory bread pudding. Has some morel mushroom, some gorgonzola, some leeks, a little garlic, a little touch of sherry in there, and a little bit of custard to give it a little richness to it as well. Add these onions here and let that sear. Let those sweat a little. Cut up some morel mushrooms. Yeah, they are indigenous to Alaska, either around a forest fire area. Uh, there are some places that locals do go to pick them, and they're pretty secret about where they're at. Let's julienne those mushrooms real quick. Add some leeks to it, and let those sweat a little. But be careful not to brown your, your butter too much. Clarified butter and margarine. Give it an off color to it. But we do want those to caramelize just a little bit and get the natural sugars out a little. Season that with a little salt and pepper. And some fresh tarragon. We'll just rough chop this a little bit. Okay, now we'll add a little bit of garlic to it. Drop in a little bit of sherry in there. Take it off the heat. Okay, we'll just add this here to it. Tarragon. Set that aside for right now. Our cream is pretty much ready, so we'll go ahead and get our custard rolling. You want it to be simmering, but you don't want to boil it. So I have some egg yolks here, just the egg yolks. You're gonna slowly add the hot cream to the chilled egg yolks. And if you don't do it slowly, you're gonna scramble your eggs because your cream is hot. Drizzle a little bit in there, incorporate that to warm up the egg yolk slightly, a little bit at a time. So this is the beginning of a custard. So if we were to chill that and then put it into another container and bake it, it would come out nice and firm, uh, almost like a creme brulee, but this isn't a creme brulee custard. It's just a, it's gonna be a savory custard. Add some dry cube bread. This is a cracked wheat sourdough. You can use any kind you want, though. I, I'm kind of, kind of like this bread a little bit. It's got a nice crusty exterior, so it'll give it some texture to it later. Now we're gonna add our ingredients that we sauteed. Just fold those in with that. Bread mixture. OK, 
kidding me? Let me just toss that real quick. Now we're just going to add about half of our custard. Just let that soak up a little. We'll add some gorgonzola. I added the gorgonzola kind of at the last because I want them to be kind of chunks in the custard or in the bread pudding. So you'll be eating and then you'll run into a nice chunk of gorgonzola. Nice little treat. Okay, that's kind of soaked up a little bit. We'll add the rest of this custard. I want the breadcrumbs to soak that up. They were dry to begin with and now you're kind of rejuvenating them with that custard, giving them some moisture and almost spongy. When they're ready to go, they'll be nice and spongy. Okay, let's let that set for a second. Meanwhile, we'll sear our fish. Add a little butter to that. Don't want too much in there. Just gonna sear it, not deep fry it. We wanna get that nice and smoking hot. Season that with a little paprika, some brown sugar, a little tarragon. So now we're ready to sear that. Oil's nice and smoking hot, see how it's smoking. And we want to just set that in there. Just lightly sear. Seal all the juices in there. Just like beef, you're gonna cook beef. You know, if you're searing it on a broiler, you know, the broiler is about 600 degrees and it's gonna sear it on the outside as well. So we're good on that. I'll just take that off. You want to kind of do this when your, your savory pudding here is still warm. So that'll help time the fish being done at the right time and your custard will be done at the right time. Just take and set that real close. I'm just going to pack that in there. And we'll just throw that in the oven, about 450 degrees, convection if, if possible. Approximately about eight minutes. Okay, well, we'll just go ahead and plate that up. Looks like our salmon's just right, and the bread pudding's nice and crisp, but moist on the inside. I'm gonna take the skin off, just lightly loosen it up from the edge. And then it should just peel right off. This is a little garlic vermouth butter. Get a nice little finish on it. Kind of brightens up that salmon a little bit too. Let's serve that with some asparagus spears. There's our stuffed steak of sockeye salmon with a savory bread pudding and steamed asparagus spears. I like to make sure that we enhance the flavor but not cover it up. Uh, choosing the ingredients, you want the best, the freshest, the highest quality you can find, and creating something out of it. 